No problem. Uh, you been enjoying the show? Yes, I've been. Yeah. What is this, by the way? This, this oh, that, this is just stereo. A, yeah, that's a stereo mic. Ah, I see. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, it gives the sound all much better much than better. The, yeah. the, the regular mics. So. Be good. You all set? Mm -hmm. um, all right. Uh, uh, thanks for talking to us, Welcome. by the way. Uh, I wanted to uh, sort of start off on your background and get a better understanding of that. You, uh, you became president of the so in 1995, CEO and president in 2002, right? So, uh, for those who don't know, what is uh, your professional background and uh, how did you come to the so? Um, well, first of all, um, without putting some disturbance in your uh, knowledge, I've been I've been uh, managing the Dassault system since '86. Uh, but it was not visible outside. Oh, okay. okay, 1986. Uh, and the reason why it was not visible outside uh, was basically our founder is is a financial person, so he's not a technical person. And uh, and uh, basically the founder uh, was uh, was. Uh, the official title I've been developing Dassault system since, since the beginning. So in short, I joined Dassault system when there were 50 people in the company. Uh, I did my military service. I was asked by the French government to go in a startup company called Dassault system. <laughs> and I did my military service at Dassault system. Uh, and I'm still doing my military service at Dassault system. Uh, so... Uh, Briefly said, I, uh, I, uh, when you have a startup company like this, nothing is well defined. It's just a group of people, geeks, developing things. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I, I created a strategy for the company because uh, at the beginning, a startup is a good idea with a good product, and you try to develop the product. So, but you need a strategy if you want to have a future. So I developed a strategy, then research activity, uh, then uh, created all the departments related to, uh, at that time, the Unix uh, workstation plans, and, uh, and, uh, and went through the different jobs, creating the HR organization in a startup. There was no HR organization, you need to build an HR organization. Uh, build the uh, marketing, the sales, and I've uh, been basically doing all these old jobs uh, uh, to really build the company. I mean, yeah. this, is, this, is, this has been my job for the last uh, almost 30 years. And so when did you feel like you're the, the man for the job to be CEO? Well, um, the CEO title was a legal title. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You've been doing it already for, for Yeah, years, so... Right? Um, um, uh, I've always been careful to um, not be an administration guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I, but I you had sort of a technical background people, already. So, uh, and, yeah, yeah. And for, uh, for many years, I, uh, I was both CEO and uh, in charge of innovation. Mm -hmm because I told the board that I was not interested to be CEO mm -hmm. uh, without being in charge of innovation. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, and, uh, and I think I am still doing that. Yeah. So, so, you know, in every high-tech company, you have different style of CEOs. You have some of the CEOs are really oriented towards sales or marketing or market development. So, uh, more CEOs with a very technical or scientific background, it's my case. Mm -hmm. Much more sensitive. To and then, what you have to build around you is build a collection of great, great teams and leaders uh, who would complement you well. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is what I've, done, I've been doing for uh, for the last uh, 20, 25 years. Or so. so I still put a lot of attention on uh, uh, very fundamental research. Uh, the strategy, of course, and also product. Very sensitive to product. Uh, so, what have been, been the challenges in, in building the company? 
Oh, you, are, you face all, ty all type of challenges. It has varies. It, it has it has been an evolution over time. Uh, as you know, in 1996, we introduced the company on the financial market, both Nasdaq and uh, Euronext. So that was a major step for us because before we were a private company. So uh, going to be a coded company on the market uh, was a way to um, not really to fund our future uh, investment, but it was more a way to be able to do uh, merger and acquisitions. Mm. Uh, so as you know, after 96, we made a lot of acquisitions. Yes. Uh, one of the first one was, uh, of course, SolidWorks, the startup company SolidWorks. And then uh, we had uh, many, like the DENEP for robotics, and then you had uh, product manager, smart team, all these became Inovia, Matrix One became Inovia, and then uh, Abacus that became Sylvia. Only last year we did even 10 acquisitions. Uh, last year. So people don't notice, but uh, we did 10, 10 acquisitions last year. On. We don't announce all of them. When they are below 50 million, we don't, we don't speak about them. Because sometimes it's a secret sensitive technology. And as you mm -hmm. know, we have Exalid now, we have NetVibes last week. I hope yeah. you are a NetVibes user, are you? Oh, yeah, I've been on that for years, actually. Very good, <laughs> very good. Already, so, already familiar with it. So you probably were astonished when you discovered that we bought uh, NetVibes. It, it was a bit of a surprise. It, it, at first, it, it seemed like a very odd acquisition, uh, but you know, it, it actually makes a lot of sense. So, uh, one thing I'm wondering about that is how it's going to work within the, the uh, the soap product line and sort of, uh, I guess, is it going to be responsible for growing the online identity of, of the soap? Yeah, like of that. course, uh, that's one, one part of it. But the other thing, the, the cool thing about the net vibes is that it's, it's, it's an outstanding way to create dashboards. And, uh, you know, if you use it, easy to use on the web. Mm -hmm. So, uh, our dream and our objective is to make it as easy to use with enterprise software. Mm -hmm. So you can get the RSS uh, feed yep. uh, mm -hmm. in a clean way, even from enterprise software. So mm -hmm. the same time, the same way as we index with Exalid, we can report with NetVibes and makes this uh, so easy for people that uh, basically when you use enterprise software, it's, uh, you already know how to use because you are familiar with the web. I think uh, most people probably are. <laughs> yeah, um, there are a lot of acquisitions going on in the, in the CAD software industry. Uh, economy is still pretty low, of course, but I, I don't really think that the bad economy is a good excuse or can even hinder like individual creative, creativity or innovation. So I'm wondering what are the, the biggest challenges from a 3D software side uh, for the 3D software industry? Well, I think we are doing a lot to democratize, democratize 3D, to make it, uh, to do uh, kind of platforms for uh, serious gaming. When I say serious gaming, it's a shortcut to express uh, what, what we do with 3D VR, for example. Um, as you know, we have, uh, so we want to continue to expand the collection of products in the, in the, in the 3D world to do very industry specific things or to do very generic collaborative platform uh, making 3D uh, as easy to use or to exploit as what you have for uh, image, text, music. If you think about it, you know, you have digital text, you have music, digital music, you have digital images, you have movies, maybe I think. And then what is next? I think 3D is the next medium. Because uh, 3D is a great way to to represent what you have in your imagination mm -hmm. and share it with someone else. And then play, experience. That's why this card is very important. Yeah. Yeah, 3D experience. Uh, 3D experience. Yeah, how is this actually shaping the, the future of the product line. It's bringing them all together, but uh, 
it, it, and it's, it's not really a platform, it's more like a branding. No, 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 it's a platform. So, it's a, so, but it's not like a product. It's a platform. Uh, you know, we, you have Google, it's a search platform online. Yeah. You have Facebook, it's a social platform online. Mm -hmm. uh, our 3D experience platform is going to be an experience platform online. Yeah. Same way okay. as Google, Facebook. If you want to do 3D experience, you will come to the SO system online. And, and you'll have this in the 3D experience yeah. in front of you. Absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, when um, you know we, you uh, you will be able to um, to do any kind of experience from uh, 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 from uh, this natural sketching like this. Mm -hmm where everywhere in all products you will have this user interface mm -hmm. and uh, you will be able to uh, really do uh, online you know free, free and sketching you know and, and then uh, create things uh -huh. in a natural way like this with mobility and then you do save and it goes on the cloud yeah, uh, so the user interface is all of our products. Everything in the SO system will go and use this mm -hmm. uh, as a way to navigate on the 3D, mm -hmm. connect in the social innovation environment, mm -hmm. index the information so you can get with NetVibes or whatever, whatever or indexing of information, the information you need to associate to that. Mm -hmm. And this will work with SolidWorks, with all the brands we have. Mm -hmm. So, for example, all SolidWorks is here. Really, so. Katia is here. Mm -hmm. um, this is realistic simulation, so Abacus is here. Mm -hmm. uh, here it's what we call 3D Swim, the social network. Mm -hmm. So, you, you can position the eight brands we have in this uh, environment. Mm -hmm. And this isn't out yet. Uh, we are just nothing. introducing it to. Uh, no, no, we started, uh, we started the beta uh, last November, the natural sketcher. Yeah, yeah that, but the app on the iPad, that's not available. Oh, no, yet. this one, yeah. no, not that. Yeah. I'm, I'm the it's first one to, to, uh, yeah. <laughs> to play with it. To play with. It's very cool. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's very cool. Uh, yeah, it's, an, it's impressive. Uh, uh, and this is the version 6 kernel on this. Oh, is it? On the <laughs> uh, speaking of version 6 and products that haven't come out yet. There was uh, SolidWorks Live Buildings that was introduced last year. It was uh, <laughs> <She's> announced <laughs> to come out <laughs> in spring and fall. And She's the so one. <laughs> What's the deal? Stop it. Uh, uh, as you know, John, John Paolo, you met with uh -huh. John Paolo, I suspect, uh -huh. on SolidWorks uh, he, uh, He's a great leader on uh, and uh, this product is, uh, is really a very novel, very innovative mm -hmm. product. And um, we, we had some hesitation about how to introduce it to the market. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, should we introduce it as a, as a point solution? Mm -hmm. uh, or should we have an industry solution for, for architecture and building design? The EC market. Yes, for the EC, EC market. You also know that uh, independently of live building, we have today uh, a joint venture with uh, Gary Technology. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, uh, we had, we have still, uh, whereby on, on Katia V5 itself, we had what we call digital project, mm -hmm. uh, which, were, which is a solution on V5 uh, to uh, really do uh, complex design of, of complex buildings, the type of things uh, Gary is doing, you know, yeah. uh, New York, yeah. and LA, and so on. Successful. Uh -huh. and, you know, if you look at the uh, bird, uh, bird nest, the Olympic Stadium in, uh, in Beijing, uh -huh. it was uh, created, uh, Arab, Arab is the engineering firm, and it was done with uh, uh, Katia Digital Project. It could not have been done otherwise. 
but we have a lot of projects like this. So, in short, we had this extremely complex engineering process for buildings with Katia Digital Project mm -hmm. on a new generation of on B5, mm -hmm. on a new generation of live building conceptual sketching for live building. You have seen the demo. And uh, it took us a little bit of time to put our house in order to uh, decide what we will sell where and where the solution, what will be the solution roadmap. Because the, the, the key point is not only to introduce a product, is to be able to explain to customer what is coming next. So I'm sure uh, tomorrow uh, uh, Bertrand will uh, explain or uh, whoever, and I think I don't remember who is presenting tomorrow for the future be product. Fielder Fielder and Neil Fielder Cook. Maybe, yeah. They will talk about how we plan to reintroduce life building. Uh, and we will reintroduce life building and you will, they will tell you tomorrow so I don't want to I don't want you to escape the session tomorrow so yeah, yeah, to definitely, definitely, yeah. uh, so I don't want to disclose they will do it themselves uh, but of course we have done a lot of work also to uh, create the next generation engineering building engineering functionalities on the same common V6 architecture so there is a comprehensive rollout now and uh, Monica, being in charge of industry for the group, said, well, we need to have a clarity on the roadmap before we push the products, because customers are going to start to use the product, and then we'll come back and say, what is next? Mm -hmm. So we have to make this uh, clean. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I think we have to clean up mm -hmm. that strategy now. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about a, a product that was that's very strong in the, the SolidWorks user community. Or it was. It was the T splines uh, add-on for uh, SolidWorks and Rhino. Uh, it was acquired by Autodesk, of course. Uh, I was wondering if you can talk about that and uh, why, uh, if, if SolidWorks is developing a better uh, sub D to NURBS type uh, program, and uh, how that, how how organic modeling is uh, going to take shape. In, in you you know that the best surfacing system in the world is Katia, yeah. by far. Mm -hmm. So no worries about uh, so other companies. Getting... By far. Yeah. All best sophisticated design are done with Katia. Yeah, but so on the software we want, side, yeah, there's... I'm going no, there. Okay. <laughs> so, so what one could say it's not Katia, one yeah. could say it's V6 component. So the idea, of course, is to make sure that each of the brands in the group can take advantage of very critical value components like this mm -hmm. to make up the products they need to make for their market. So the SolidWorks R&D team can do shopping in the DASO system R&D powerhouse yeah. and reuse whatever they can they think is useful for their users and uh, customers. Yeah. And this is what is going to happen. Yeah, because that, that functionality is already there in V6, Katia, yeah. and, uh, Shape and all those. Yeah. So, okay. so, uh, so uh, that's the value of having uh, this uh, shared component across the all the brands. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think uh, Economy of scale is, is important, and, uh, and the beauty of SolidWorks is the great user experience mm -hmm. for a solid for a, for for a SolidWorks user. So the question is not only about using the technical component. The question is what kind of user experience do you want to provide? Mm -hmm. But as you know, uh, we are now sharing a lot of technology, uh, and as you know, uh, Simulia is going to. Uh, do uh, the mutualization of um, the solver techniques with uh, Cosmos Works that we, we bought years, uh, several years ago to have really a consistent product family and, uh, and then the SolidWorks team in charge of the product and solutions around the SolidWorks brand will decide uh, how much of the function they need, how it should be presented to the end users in order to provide the best. Cool 
experience for their end users. That's mm -hmm. that's the way to go. And you're you're speaking of uh, the V6 interface coming to the SolidWorks. I think the interface is uh, not the right uh, command. The interface would has to be SolidWorks interface, whatever is yeah. the next generation SolidWorks interface or the evolution of it. Mm -hmm. It's more the V6 technology. You know, it's like in the auto sector, you know, big groups are sharing components mm -hmm. between different vehicles. Uh, but the critical components are creating a value and then you provide the user experience, which is, which is uh, the appropriate one. So, so with uh, John Paolo's leadership <coughs> now, I think um, uh, the SolidWorks team can really create a collection of new capabilities shopping what they have to shop in the SO system group to satisfy their, their users. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not a user interface, it's more the uh, technology yeah, the back underneath. Back. Is that like, like I, I talked with Derek yesterday about the, the connector to Anovia, that's like yeah. the first step. Of yeah, this was a big demand for many uh, SOLIDWORKS uh, users, uh, for mid-sized and large companies. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we learned the last three years that uh, many of the, our customers, SOLIDWORKS customers, large customers especially, were also Innovia, uh, initially Matrix one, but then became Innovia V6 customer, and they said, you know, those solutions should work together, and we have, we have created everything that can solve their problem from that standpoint, and I think they are very happy. So the connectors, uh, the capacity to uh, synergies between product and solutions. So when's the timeline when we'll see more V6 technology inside SolidWorks? There is already a lot, but nobody yeah. sees it. Yeah. And I don't think you want to see it. It's being added just yes, gradually. Yes, it's being added. Uh, and uh, people don't... What I want is to make this un not visible. Yeah. So it won't be like a drastic user interface change, like no, no, light no, buildings we don't want to all do. of a sudden. No, no, no. We don't. No, light yeah, building is we started from scratch because yeah. we were not in the building design. So we, mm -hmm. John Paolo said we want to do something that will challenge Autodesk on their own field. Mm -hmm. So so it was coming from, you know, we had no legacy, no install base. We can create yeah. breakthrough. Uh, so I think we should be we should do that for new sectors. Other than that, I I want the adoption of. V6 technology and component to be uh, seamless to SOLIDWORKS users. Mm -hmm. That's the best. Yeah, I think they prefer that. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. But that's true for everyone. You know, when we had new breakthrough technology in Katia, mm -hmm. or in Delia, or in uh, all users are saying, you know, can you insert this technology but make it simple for me? You know, I want to keep the user experience. So I think it's the same for all, all brands. Um, we probably have time for maybe one more question. One I know more you question? need to get to lunch. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, so, how do you think the role of Dassault Software in the design process is going to change over the next ten years? Oh well, that's a that's a, that's a, that's a beautiful question. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the you, dream. Yeah, it's a dream. Yeah. Well, um, Monica, I want you to address that question. What is the role of Dassault System Software in the design world? This is the best way to introduce with the experience. Um, I think that versus what any software company, not only the SO system, was doing uh, until now, that was providing software for making an incredible type of design, the most complex of the better, the most virtual the better, the most rendered the better. Uh, it, it, we are arrived at the point where the uh, product is not exactly what our customers want to do. I mean, the design of a product is just one of the elements that is going to create the value for the ultimate consumer. So this is the reason why actually you talk about the 3D experiences. Because that experience is much more than, than a product, because it has inside, if you want not just the software for making a design, but all the relevant attributes actually that tend to be the value for the consumer. So if I take an example, of making a design, it is a wonderful design, it is not going to make a product successful in the market. Therefore, what the customer needs to take into account when doing design, it is more than the design per se, it is for whom do I design this? 
So taking into account what is the consumer ultimate need, it is the way that the design will evolve. So we do provide the design experiences because through the platform we can only not only think in terms of what is the perfect design, but what is the perfect situation, what is the perfect consumer experience, and even make or test or simulate with real consumers things that are not yet real in the real world because they are just virtual. That is the way that the companies need to evolve and the hard evolving actually because in the end what they want to do is to sell products. It's not just one product, it's what is the experience that this product will deliver to the market and how this will differentiate myself, my company from the others. So that's why, uh, you know, after having uh, invested for 30 years in a sweeping as a way to represent things, whatever they are, having invested in using 3D to do digital mock-up, replacement of physical mock-up, having invested to expand the horizon of digital mock-up with product life cycle management. Mm -hmm. We think the next horizon, as just Monica explained, the next horizon is how can we help our any users of any DASO system software in the world create experiences. Not product, experiences in a way. You have the mobility, this kind of product. This is not the product design only. It's what kind of experience do I have when I use it? What kind of services are available? So the experience is more important than product. Experience goes beyond product. That's why 3D experience is the next horizon after the event. Because if you can imagine, as Monica said, that you can create, when you are thinking about product, you can create the virtual experience, how this product is going to be used in real life. Mm -hmm. So not the product itself, not the product, not this physical hardware, mm -hmm. but how it's going to be used. Then you can establish a new connection between the consumer on the one providing the product. Mm -hmm. It's easier to understand than PLM2. Everybody knows a 3D experience. <laughs> right. You are making Monica happy. <laughs> because this is That's what she goal, told me. Right? <laughs> exactly. I think your point is very key. That's why we believe that 3D experience will become Vera. Mm -hmm. Now we have to show it, we have to show how it works. But uh, you are very, I, I, I'm so pleased that you made this remark. Really, I, I am very pleased that you made this remark. It's easier to understand than PLM. Mm -hmm. We still need TPLM. You know, uh, on, on companies are doing complex things, so they need to know how they organize themselves. Boring but difficult problem to solve, like compliance, certification, you, you know, yeah. sourcing. So those are tough problems to solve for customers. They need robust TPLM solution for that. But there is a blue ocean beyond PLM. And um, it is 3D experience. That's why you will love this business card. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks.